This is the Life's Better podcast where we look at how life is so much better with God, community, and purpose. My name is Jonathan. This is Josh Doolin. Hey. And today we are going to be looking into how to have conversations with people that you disagree with Mm -hmm. because we've all been there. Mm -hmm. We've all had those moments like, oh, this is awkward. This is uncomfortable. Uh, I'm a little angry about what you just said. (laughs) And so how do you have that conversation and still have rich, meaningful community with people? Now, before we get into it, we're going to do a game. It's called Agree or Disagree. (laughs) It's pretty simple. I I have a list of relatively controversial statements. Yeah. And I'm going to read them one at a time, and you've got a list for me. And the only thing that we can say is agree or disagree. Now, after you make the yeah. statement, you you can go ahead and make your little clarifying comments cool. if cool. you have to. Mm-hmm. But up front, agree or disagree. Cool. Okay. And then are we are we both saying it, and then we'll talk? Or? I'm going to go ahead and just share mine with you, and okay. you share yours with me, and okay. it, we'll just own whatever it throws is thrown at us. Okay, cool. Does that sound good? Cool. All right. First one, testing on animals should be banned. Agree or disagree? I disagree. Okay, so for those of you (laughs) who love animals and enjoy what PETA is doing around the world, you can send all your hate mail (laughs) to to Josh at accbethechurch.com and just let him know all all the reasons why he's the worst human being ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any, (laughs) Any further clarification on that? You don't have to. You don't have to. I think uh, if if you're going to test on live subjects, then I'd rather you do it on animals first than kids or adults. Like you selfish human <laughs> being. Yeah. That's All right, what do, you, me. what do you got for me? Anyway, uh, okay, so the first one is AI is dangerous uh, and should be illegal to create. Illegal. I disagree. Okay. I disagree. Okay. AI, I, I may agree with the it can be dangerous, mm. but there's so many helpful applications to it. I would imagine Jarvis, would... Iron Man. Like, I mean, come on. <laughs> We'd just be missing out on some things. <laughs> Particularly, I mean, okay, now I'm getting weird, but I was just saying, if we ban it here in the United States and it's developed in other parts mm. of the world, it's like, well, then we're setting ourselves behind. That's a it's... really good political answer. I know, I, I know. Yeah, I know. And, and I, I hesitated to even say because I <laughs> try not to get too political. All right. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying that you're taking a side there, but like that's like something I feel like a politician would like. <laughs> You know, uh, like empathize with every. Like, we got to make gotta, America great here. <laughs> we can't let AI get owned by the yeah. commies over there. We got to do something. All right, Josh. The voting age should be reduced to 16. Agree. Agree. Mm-hmm. So you have just won some fans of your students. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to disagree on this one. Really? Okay. I love students, but I. I know too many 16-year-olds. Mm. See, I think if you're old enough to make money for a company you should be able and to have vote. a job, you should be able to vote. I like that. That's a good argument. That's a good argument. All right, what do you got for All me? right, uh, let's see. Should we try? Um, actually, this is one I wrote because I, I genuinely want to know what your thought is on this. Oh, okay. Should we try to colonize Mars? I'm going to disagree. Okay. Okay. I'm going to disagree. I, I think, is this biblical or is it not, not You know, the, everything is biblical in my <laughs> head. At, on some level, mm-hmm. it has to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, but my, probably even more than that, it's like, eh, there's a lot of money in that. I, <laughs> I just don't see that being a good investment. That's <laughs> just more my practical I agree, because I want to be the first pastor on Mars. I think that would be just awesome. Just like, put that on my head, my okay. tombstone or whatever. Okay, first yeah, yeah. pastor on Mars. That's, yeah. that's what you want yeah. to be known first for. First baptism on Mars. <laughs> like All of that would be so cool. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to work. There's, <laughs> there's no water on Mars. But Yet. You, <laughs> all right, here we go. Drug addicts should get help, not punishment. I'm going to disagree. Ooh. This one's tough. Yep, I understand. Yeah. I but definitely you, think they should get both. Yeah. But if you completely eliminate consequence, then what's the like, what's yeah. the point, you know? If you can't feel the pinch, no reason to walk away from, mm-hmm. you know, the painful lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, all right. Number th- three? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I wrote really poorly here. <laughs> Should there be legally bound laws on technology exposure to children? Okay. Read it one more time. So, like, should there be laws uh-huh. that, like, parents are legally bound by this to, on technology exposure and children? Like, should there be limits? What are the limits? Like, all of that stuff. Do you, do you think there should be laws passed? I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one, right? That is a tough one. 
I my my knee jerk reaction says agree, but I have absolutely no like technical uh, you know technology in my mind mm. that's saying because this one is dangerous. Mm. Uh, I, but I, I I would imagine there's probably something out there at yeah. some point in time that I would say yeah that's probably a good thing. I, and computers and things. I don't know. That, mm -hmm. You should be a good parent and monitor, you know, safe things. I don't know. Maybe it should be a lot. <laughs> Look at me. I'm backpedaling on my own thing. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. All right. Sorry. I, I, I came up with two <laughs> tough ones. Beauty competitions. <laughs> super controversial. Beauty competitions create unrealistic and unhealthy beauty standards. Agree. Agree. Yeah. yeah. I'm not even asking you to, abandon, uh, to ban them, but I would agree. So that, yeah. That can definitely yeah, be. yeah. That's just a easy... If you ask me, should we ban them, that would be a little tougher, but yeah. uh, anyway. Uh, this one, I don't even know how I feel about it. <laughs> Unpaid internships should be against the law. Disagree. Okay. Disagree. Okay. I, yeah. That, that's just one of those, while you're still in school, you can be, that's part of the education process. Mm. I don't think you necessarily have to be paid for it. I might, I might be, I'm, not, I'm on the fence. I think that they shouldn't be legal, but I think there should be laws in place to protect people from abusing that because I think that it probably does get abused. Yeah, if you, <laughs> if, you looked at, if you looked at what I really contributed in my early days mm. to any like career path, I think I probably did way more damage than good. <laughs> so there's like this, he's not really helping, mm. but he's getting an education. Shouldn't we really be paying for him? At some point, yes, but right now, no, you're really just learning, and it'll be good for your long term. Yeah, so. yeah, okay. All right, last one for you, Josh. The minimum wage, minimum wage should be $15 per hour. Agree. Yeah? Yeah. Even here in Kentucky? I think so, yeah. Okay. Right. Well, okay, so that's, that's an interesting topic that I've thought about recently is like, and it would hurt us only, but a law that could be passed is... Uh, a minimum wage that is established based off of the cost of living in each state. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's probably because, a better way to go for it. Because fifteen dollars here would be huge, <laughs> yeah. as opposed to like fifteen dollars in in a big city might not even get you a place to live. No. <laughs> like very difficult. Uh, yeah. But I, I'm pro Kentucky, so you know what? Fifteen dollars <laughs> across the board. <laughs> All right, that works. All right, last one for me. Uh, last one for me. I feel bad because I, I meant to print off a picture for it, but I at least posed the question a little bit early. Yeah. Uh, blue, black dress or white gold dress? And I'll throw up a picture for you guys. This, it, I'm pretty sure I saw blue. Originally, okay. I think I saw blue. Yeah. But I don't remember. It's been you know, a while. I should have like made it an agree or disagree statement. Yeah. I'm going to say, is the dress blue, black? Um, agree. Okay. Agree. Actually, it is blue black. It's, like in, in and, the real dress is blue black, but like it's it's a pretty cool eye trick. Yeah, like, uh, and stuff. It, it for those of you who are just listening and you're not on YouTube, go to the just, YouTube channel, check it out. It's kind of fun. Or just Google blue black dress, and, and you'll you, you'll, you'll, you'll you'll immediately find it. Okay, so we did this little exercise because some of you who are listening, um, those who are watching through YouTube, maybe some of the things we've shared have caused you to go, wow, those are idiots, oh, yeah. I can't believe that, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and there, it doesn't take much to enter a conversation mm. and have those moments. And so how can we have dialogue with people in a helpful way? Uh, Josh, as a pendulum swings for you, are you, when you have those moments of disagreeing, are you the, I'm going to fight to the death, or are you pendulum swinging towards, I'm going to seek peace at all costs? Uh, definitely the seek peace at all costs. Okay. Kind of person. Yeah. Okay. I will drop, I, if, I, if I think my opinion will absolutely just destroy somebody, like my relationship with that person, yeah. I'll leave it for another day. Okay. It's not that important. Okay. Oh, that's Unless good. it is important. I, w <laughs> I, would have, I would have guessed that about you. What would you, mm. what would you guess about me? I would, hmm. Hmm. I think that maybe you naturally swing towards you want your opinion heard, but I think that you, as a person, typically go the opposite way. Thank you, Josh, because I I want that to be true because <laughs> I think I do naturally fight to the death, but I'm trying to grow and I'm trying think, to yeah. 
trying to get past that. Neither uh, are perfect, though. So, like, let's say l- both have their, their faults. That's so. true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we're growing. All right. So, when I say the church name, Westboro Baptist mm. Church, what comes to your mind? Uh, angry, hateful people who go to funerals. <laughs> yeah. If, if you're not familiar with West, Westboro Baptist, they're... They've been making controversy for years Mm. because they'll go. They'll go to funerals of people who have died uh, in combat, and they'll protest their funeral saying it's actually a good thing. It's actually God's judgment on a nation that is growing increasingly okay with homosexuality, and so this is God's judgment. And so they'll have signs that say things like, you know, uh, God hates fags and things like uh, planes crash and God laughs. Just, you know, Mm. controversial, controversial things. I bring this up because a woman by the name of Megan Phelps uh, Roper actually was a part of that church since she was five years old. In fact, before she could read those picket signs that she was holding at five years old, Mm. she was there picketing places like funerals. And then 20 years later, she actually walked away from the church, and the reason why is because friends of hers on Twitter convinced her to really see that maybe her thoughts and opinions and the opinions of the church might be a little off. Mm. Now, how does that happen? This is what Megan says. It says, initially, the people I encountered on the platform were just as hostile as I expected. Then the conversations would ensue, and it was civil full of genuine curiosity on both sides. Mm. How could the other come to such outrageous conclusions about the world? There was no confusion about our position, but eventually the line between friend and foe began to blur. Mm. We started seeing each other as human beings, and it changed the way that we spoke uh, to one another. It took time, but eventually those conversations planted seeds of doubt in me. Pretty amazing story. What stands out to you as, you know, particularly impactful? (laughs) The craziest thing to me is that uh, somebody's mind was changed online, which is just unheard of. Yeah. But uh, also, uh, you know, something that is crazy to me that uh, I feel like doesn't get... uh, it's, It's a mindset that is slowly dying, which is, you know, there's a reason that this person, who is a human being has the beliefs that they do, and I can maybe help and come from a standpoint as a friend rather than just think they're a lost cause, they're an evil person, they, that, you know, I'm good, they're evil. Yeah, I'm right, they're wrong, Mm -hmm. nothing's gonna change, yeah, absolutely. So what we're gonna do, because Megan is basically trying to advocate for people to have, you know, civil conversations, and she gives four tips on how to do this, particularly when you're in a conversation with somebody that you disagree with. So we're gonna look at her four tips, we're gonna have a discussion about it, and we're hopefully gonna learn how to do this ourselves. So tip number one, she says, don't assume bad intent. Mm. Don't go into the relationship assuming bad intent. Uh, This is how she explains it. Assuming ill motives almost instantly cuts us off from truly understanding why someone does and believes as they do. We forget they're a human being with a lifetime of experience that shape their mind. We get stuck on the first wave of anger, and the conversation has a very hard time ever moving beyond it. But when we assume good, natural intent, we give our minds a much stronger framework for dialogue. This is exactly mm. what you were saying. Mm. Uh, this is not oftentimes where we are, but this is this is this is just one of those things that I think like in friendship, it might be easy to do. Because yeah. I know, Josh, you've got my best interest in mind. I have your best. So we may disagree on something, but we're not we're not gonna enter the relationship, enter the conversation assuming the worst. Yeah. However, yeah. Have you ever been on the other side where you have started a dialogue with somebody and you already had your guard up? Never, never. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm such no. Uh, this is uh, some some time that I can I can admit something here. Uh, I I naturally am just extremely negative about uh, politicians I meet, yeah. even local ones, and I feel <laughs> bad about that. But like there there's I just I just think okay, you're the type of person that. You know, they they were like uh, the homecoming king and queen in high school. Like, they they just they love to be popular. You know, and so yeah. any any motive that they have of doing good, I just think is it's for you. And so like, I had a friend in high in college who was uh, m- 
dating now married to a person who was running for local office okay. and she wanted to come and hang out with us and I just assumed she's just she's doing just this just looking to like, for both yeah yeah it's everything <laughs> uh, but she ended up being delightful and great and uh, you know when she found out I wasn't even registered to vote in the area, she was still very kind to me. So like it, it, it was, it changed my mind up. But I, I have that around, sure. and still do at times around uh, politicians. So okay, if you're looking for votes, don't don't waste your time with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate your honesty there. I I think one of the things that Megan is really trying to communicate and. The way that I've always phrased it is when you enter a relationship, one of the best things to do or enter a conversation with somebody that maybe even that you, you heard something about and there's yeah. some history there. Uh, walking into that conversation, believing the best about that person, mm. not assuming the worst can really change the relationship yeah. in a positive way. Because we as people, we naturally find whatever we're looking for. So if you're if you're looking for those assumptions of the worst, guess what? You're going to find the worst yeah. in that person. Yeah. But if you're looking like, you know what? No, I'm going to believe the best. You're probably going to find the best. If nothing else, you're probably going to find that, yeah, he's or she is a human being created in the image of God. And for that reason, maybe that reason alone, you should actually bring some love into that mm -hmm. relationship. Uh, similar to you, there's some people in my life who they've just got weird ideas when it comes to health and nutrition. And any time they start talking about health and nutrition, it's like, whatever, what kind of <laughs> hippie dippy, you know, are you? And so I noticed that I was just being a jerk. Mm -hmm. Like I would enter those relationships and anytime those comments come in, I wasn't even listening to them. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to think through how do they know this? They've done the research, that's totally bogus. You, like I'm already thinking these things. And I just found myself, dude, I'm a total jerk right now. Mm. I'm not actually helping this relationship grow. And so I just started, you know what, I'm gonna believe the best. I'm gonna believe the best that maybe they've done some research and we'll have a, a civil conversation. And it's been a game changer. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm no longer quite as big of a jerk. <laughs> All right, tip number two. Tip number two is to stay calm. And this one's uh, a little tough. Yeah. It's a, it, uh, the quote that we got from, what is her name again? Megan. Uh, Megan yeah. uh, says, this takes practice and patience, but it's powerful. When my husband was still part of an anonymous Twitter acquaint, uh, was still an anonymous Twitter acquaintance. Crazy that she married one of these people, I which know. is just awesome. Yeah. Uh, our discussions frequently became uh, became hard and pointed, but we always refused to escalate. Instead, he would change the subject. He would tell a joke or recommend a book or gently excuse himself from the conversation. We knew the discussion wasn't over. Uh, just pause for a time to bring us back to an even keel. And yeah, that's. So, so incredible. I mean, if you're single right now, actually, and you're looking for a husband <laughs> or a Twitter. wife. Twitter arguments. Just make sure, just make sure that you don't, mm. like, get angry. You stay calm. Stay and who calm. knows, maybe you'll find yourself a bride or a, uh, a husband at some point. I'm curious in your life. I, I know you probably have some people that have modeled this really well, staying mm. calm even when things are getting tense. What have you seen in them? Who, who might they be and how have you actually seen it modeled really well? I talk about them too much, but my dad is easily the, the example for me. Uh, regardless of what happened in whether it be like a dangerous situation I've put myself in or an argument that I had with my mom because mo like <laughs> most of our arguments were uh, in our house were between yeah. me and her uh, he would always stay calm about it and he wouldn't mm. take sides he wouldn't get really really angry and uh, I just saw the the amount of peace that can come from a from a person who just is not gonna react be a reactionary and actually have the end in mind which is to bring us back together and to have peace. I, Carl has clearly modeled it really well because mm. I definitely see this in you. Mm. I don't I don't ever see you getting really bent out of shape. Uh, you always seem really calm. What are some of the tips, tricks that you use when you find yourself, your blood is boiling a little bit, what do you do to actually stay calm? Yeah, so, uh, I, I, I really do think it comes from my competitive nature, which is odd, uh, but like I've decided a long time ago that the uh, the way I win is to make, like out, in a conversation, mm. isn't if my point like gets mm. pushed, but it's if our relationship is better by the end of it, if that makes sense. That's cool. I don't, I don't know, like, and, and if I, like, and I, I just have this competitive mindset, that's how I win, so I'm gonna strive to do that. I, I really enjoy that perspective because it still allows us to be competitive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because let's be honest, the reason why you're arguing in the first place is because you want to win the argument. Yeah, yeah. But if you just shift it slightly and say, I'm still going to win, but I'm going to win relationally, that's, mm -hmm. that's huge. That's mm -hmm. great. That's a good tip. Yeah, you know what mine is? What? 
I just say a sarcastic joke. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how I stay calm. It's like, let's keep it light. In fact, just the other week, I was, I was in a conversation with a group of guys that were talking about the park and how they, the downtown park, uh, where they built the, rebuilt the stage. Yeah, yeah. And one of the guys was talking about, yeah, I drove by there and there was a bunch of teenagers there and it's just a matter of time before they vandalize the whole thing. <laughs> and one of the other guys says, well, did you call the police? And I'm like, wow, this is getting hardcore. Like, there's some teenagers on a stage, and now we're calling the police. So I'm thinking, like, these guys are crazy. Uh, and they're like, well, no, I didn't call the police. Oh, you should have called the police. And this guy was just adamant that next time you see those teenagers, call the police. And so I just kind of, like, very calmly just said, well, hey, guys, let's, let's not forget. It is a park. <laughs> and I, I think the last time, I, I, I think it's okay, like, to play at the park. And <laughs> how dare they have fun on the stage? And it was yeah. funny because one of the other, I mean, everybody chuckled. And one of the other guys was like, yeah, I just think we should shoot them. You know, and it just kind of went oh to this. God. But it was a joke. It was yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, hey, yeah, we, yeah. we've all overreacted here. Let's dial mm-hmm. it back. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was nice. So that's how I usually stay calm. <laughs> okay, tip number three that Megan gives us. She says, ask questions. Mm. Asking questions signals, this is what she says, signals to someone they're being heard. When my friends on Twitter stopped accusing and started asking questions, I, I almost automatically mirrored them. Their questions gave me room to speak. But they also gave me permission to ask them questions and truly hear their responses. Mm. It fundamentally changed the dynamic of our conversation. Stephen Covey, we, we talk about Stephen quite often, but I think he references this when he talks about the importance of empathic listening. Yeah. That yeah. whole idea of you're listening to genuinely understand, not just get your point across. And I think this also is true when it comes to asking questions so that you're able to more fully step into their shoes. I think there are helpful questions that do this and probably unhelpful questions that do this. I, I think the unhelpful questions are the gotcha questions. Mm. Are you familiar with the whole gotcha? We see this in politics all the time. I don't know if you remember this because this was uh, back in 2008, but Sarah Palin, she was running for vice president. Yeah, yeah. So there was this gotcha moment with Sarah Palin. She, her foreign policy and what she knew about what was going on in the world, it was already a little suspect. She had made some comments like, oh, no, I, I definitely have a good foreign policy, you know, outlook because I'm in Alaska and Russia's our next door neighbor. It's like, well, I don't know if that really makes you an expert, but okay. So she's in this interview with Katie Couric. I don't know if you remember this. No. But Katie Couric asks her, so what publications, what newspapers, what magazines are you regularly reading so that you stay abreast of what's going on in the world? And it was obvious that she was not ready to answer that question. So she said, well, you know, there's several that I actually read and I really appreciate the, the press and what they're doing. For You know, she kind of dodged it. Mm-hmm. Katie's not having it. She's like, no, mm-hmm. but I really want to know what you're reading. And, th- and this was what she said. Um, all of them, any of them that um, have, have been in front of me over all these years. <laughs> and it was this clearly, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, you don't yeah. read them. You really don't know what's going on in yeah. the world. And that might be relatively fair game in the political arena, but you cannot expect to have rich community with people mm. if you're just throwing out questions of "gotcha, gotcha." Uh, one way to one way to look at this is if if all the oxygen in this room was suddenly sucked out, mm. how interested in finishing this podcast would you be? Pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you'd want you'd want to like, like, hey, let's finish it. I I can't breathe. Yeah, it's okay. You, really? Absolutely. You, I want to leave. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Want to get out of the room. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> you probably wouldn't necessarily want to finish it because we still got a good five to ten oh, minutes. Oh yeah. Of, so you'd want to probably not finish it, but no, leave the room. No, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be Survive. Done. How do I get out of here? Yeah. <laughs> um, again, going back to a quote that Stephen gives, uh, Stephen Covey. That is, he says, next to physical survival. The greatest need of a human being is psychological survival, mm. to be understood, yeah. to be affirmed, to be validated, to be appreciated. And then he says this, when we listen with the intent to understand and ask questions to understand, you give that person psychological air. You mm. allow them to breathe and yeah. they're no longer just trying to survive. Yeah. yeah. So ask questions. Ask questions to really make sure that you're trying to understand, not just get your point across. All That's right. a good one. Tip number, Tip number four. four is make the argument. And if there's one that I struggle with, it might be this one. Uh, it <laughs> says, uh, her quote is, as kind as my friends on Twitter were, 
If they hadn't actually made their arguments, it would have been so much harder for me to see the world in a different way. Uh, we are all products of our upbringing. <laughs> I have really bad handwriting. Products of our upbringing, upbringing and our beliefs reflect our experiences. We can't expect others to spontaneously change their own minds. If we want change, we have to make the case for it. Which yeah. is, I, I like that quote a lot. It's a good one. I, I'm, you know, with any conversation, there's always a little rabbit trails, and I think the same mm. is true with arguments. You know, have you ever been in one of those moments where, like, 20 minutes into an argument, it's taken so many twists and turns, you can't even remember what the original argument was? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do those conversations go well? <laughs> no, no, they never do. And uh, it, it's funny, like, those are the ones where you've almost got to double down. Like, your mind tells you, all right, I, know, I, I, I don't know where it's going. I don't know where we started. But Win at all costs. I, I, <laughs> I got to keep going, because yes. otherwise I'm going to look like an idiot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, and I think one of the best ways, and I have I had to learn it, and I don't think I've actually learned it yet, but I'm learning <laughs> it, is if if I'm in a discussion and something is brought up that I haven't really researched and I don't necessarily understand mm. all the different nuances of it, I better keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Like, I better not just start arguing. Maybe I'll go back and I'll do some research, I'll figure some things out, and then if that conversation comes up again, well then I can clearly state my opinion. I can, I, I can state the argument so that we at least have a framework to continue to work from as opposed to all these different rabbit trails that just yeah. make you angry. Yeah. Uh, one example of where I think people really need to figure this out. Uh, this is certainly not the only one, but over the last couple months, uh, you know, pro-life and pro-choice, talk about dividing lines. I mean, it's mm. always been for years and years and years, but definitely over the last few months, there's more and more of those conversations. And I think at some point, you just got to be able to state your argument very clearly so that you have a frame of reference to to build off of. Yeah. Um, you know, someone, someone may come to you and say, you know, Josh, I can't believe that someone who is educated and as, as smart as you would be against a woman's right to choose whatever she wants to do with her body. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, like you, you need to have an argument to say against that if you are pro-life. Um, such an argument might be something like this. Well, intentionally, it's wrong to intentionally kill innocent human life. You know, science is really clear that from the very beginning of development, you are a unique, whole, and living human being. You are not connected to a person's body like skin cells developing on your arm. Mm. You, the embryo, and you, the adult, there is, there's almost no significant difference in those individuals. Yeah. And so arguments, arguments about, you know, uh, size, arguments about uh, location, um, environment, uh, level of development. These are all arguments that come really, really short because why would that allow, why is it okay to kill you then and not now? Because those arguments really don't hold a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And so again, at the very least, making that first sentence, making that first statement of, hey, it's wrong, it's wrong to you know, intentionally kill human life. You've just framed the conversation. Yeah. Uh, and then you can give those other details. But in that, in that, it allows at least a platform so that you can continue to come back to and say, I'm, I'm not, I'm not arguing about this and that. I, mm -hmm. I think it's wrong to intentionally kill uh, innocent human life. And, and to speak on that one specifically, because I think this is something that you know, not only students of mine, but also even people in our church or outside the church, like they want to know pastors' opinions on this. Right. Like, how do not only like what do I believe, but like how do I treat the other side? If that sure. makes sense. And so remembering the others too, because like. Every person I've talked to, and yes, there are Christians on both sides of the argument yeah. that I've heard talk to me, uh, like they both de kind of demonize the other. And I think most people, if you just have this this concept of what's the best I can assume of that person, mm. they, they, they are defending somebody, sure. whether it's a young mom mm. or the, the, the typical like thing that people go to is, what if it's like a 13 year old that was raped? Yeah. Uh, okay, they, they clearly are empathizing with that person. And then the other side is like, okay, we're empathizing with a, a, a human child. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So like if we can start to like understand that a bit. Beautiful point. Uh, like, like just remember all four points are really important, especially with that one, yeah. because I think this, this 
I mean, it, I, luckily, I think that the rhetoric has started to die down, mm. but I, it could divide churches. It could because people aren't willing to listen, you know, to each other uh, and and to think the best of somebody. So, yeah. yeah. Well, if you've disagreed with anything that we've said, <laughs> you can email any hate to Jonathan at I don't give a rip dot com. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. We want to make sure that uh, we're open to dialogue. I hope Absolutely. you guys have learned something from these tips. And until next time, don't forget that life is so Hit much us better. Up on Twitter. Yeah, I might marry one of us. I, I'm Just not kidding. on Twitter or Josh, and we're both married. So yeah, yeah, sorry. You're out of luck there. Don't forget that life is so much better with God, community, and purpose. <laughs> sorry about that. I, completely no, I threw off your groove there. You're good. You're good. <laughs>